What a win for the San Francisco 49ers, regardless of how you slice it up. That is a statement victory for this organization, for head coach Kyle Shanahan, for Brock Purdy, and the rest of this team. You're watching the San Francisco 49ers Report by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Sr., and no matter where you are or how you're tuned in, as always, we appreciate you for joining the show. For everybody who tuned into our watch party, thank you so much for supporting the program. So... Going into this game in Philadelphia, NFL Week 13, all Niner fans, this entire organization had this game circled on the calendar after the NFC title bout last year in which San Francisco, rightfully so, did not believe that they had an equal opportunity and an equal chance to make it to the Super Bowl because Brock Purdy went out early, Josh Johnson, the Niners' fourth-string quarterback, came in, and then Christian McCaffrey had to throw passes in an NFC Championship game, and then Brock Purdy had to hand the football off when the Niners knew that his elbow was shredded. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is a statement victory for San Francisco. 42-19 win over the Philadelphia Eagles. An Eagles team that I thought that coming into this game was the best team in the NFL, the most multiple team in the NFL, and still is but was the number one seed in the NFC. But now that San Francisco has won this head-to-head -head matchup and they did so going away in dominant fashion, you have to look at this Niners team, even though they're not the number one seed in the NFC, as the best team in the NFC. A lot of things factored in to why San Francisco was able to win this football game by 23 points. But when you look back at this victory for this Niners team, what a win for head coach Kyle Shanahan. What a win for Brock Purdy. What a win for all of the players on this Niners team who at this same field in South Philadelphia at Lincoln Financial Field basically knew that their fate was sealed last year in the first quarter once Brock Purdy went out. I understand and I respect that Josh Johnson has been able to have the career that he's had as a longtime backup quarterback in this league. But when you have to insert a quarterback like that against an Eagles team that came in as the number one seed, 14-3, and three, San Francisco was sour about that defeat. And that's why they reacted to the defeat the way that they did. Because on an equal playing field, they wanted to see how they matched up with the Philadelphia Eagles. And this Eagles team, look, they've gone on a gauntlet stretch here. And they've won five games when trailing at halftime. The Eagles going down for the first time in a situation like that this year because San Francisco kept the pedal to the metal. And the Seagulls team beat Kansas City on the road a couple of weeks ago. Last week, overtime game against the Buffalo Bills. They eked out a win there. San Francisco had the clear rest advantage. And Philadelphia, as the game wore on, looked tired. They looked worn down. And you have to give the Niners credit for this dub, and you have to factor that in for Philadelphia, right? But to the Niners' credit... As far as talent goes, they're just as talented, if not more talented, than the Philadelphia Eagles. And their pace of play, their style of play, their physicality was a reason why they wore the Eagles down in this football game. Make sure you subscribe to the channel for daily coverage of the San Francisco 49ers. By the way, we are approaching 104,000 subscribers, so be a part of the faithful family here at Chat Sports and hit that sub button. You look at how this Niners offense fared against this Eagles defense. In the lead up to this game, we talked so much about how this Niners team statistically, when you looked at the numbers, had the edge against Philadelphia. 456 yards of offense, 8 yards per play. That's a beatdown right there. Brock Purdy, 19 of 27 for 310 yards. San Francisco against one of the top rushing defenses in the NFL, able to run 28 times for 146 yards. Average yards per carry at 5.2. What was important here, San Francisco as the road team, Zero turnovers, time of possession. Actually, the Niners lost it 28 minutes to 31 minutes, but it was their explosive plays and their adjustments from the start of this game to the end of it that I thought was the difference. 
First two drives, Niners went three and out, both of those times. And the Eagles' pass rush was able to get home. Then Kyle Shanahan made a great adjustment that meant a lot in the course of this football game. Quick hitters, quick throws to get the ball out of Brock Purdy's hands quickly to neutralize that Philadelphia pass rush, which ended the game last year in the NFC Championship game. And then that led to Brock Purdy being able to get rid of the ball, but then you relied on your strengths of being a great yards-after-the-catch team. How about the performance from Debo Samuel today? He looked like the 2021 20, All-Pro. Brandon Ayuk getting open consistently, making very tough catches and critical catches. Jawan Jennings, a couple of massive plays on some of those money downs, and George Kittle in that first half in particular was really good. And then when you combine the quick hitters with the run game and the blocking scheme, the play design, pre-snap motion, post-snap designs. I thought that Kyle Shanahan caught a beautiful game here, and he was in his bag as a play caller, and that goes down as a statement victory for Kyle Shanahan considering the opponent, how good Philadelphia is, how dominant San Francisco was, but the adjustments in-game that took place for the Niners to be able to come back from down 6 nothing to win this ball game. And this is pretty crazy, right? From the time that the Eagles took a 6 nothing lead, the Niners then responded with a 35-7 run. And the Eagles' offense held in check here. 333 total yards, 4.8 yards per play. Hurts, pretty solid. Went into the locker room, had to go through a concussion protocol, but couldn't find a rhythm, and this Eagles team could not run the football. 18 carries, 46 yards, and that really shut down what is a very diverse approach and offense for Philadelphia. Eagles didn't turn the football over either, but this Niners team at the point of attack held up very well, and this Niners team had more explosive plays as compared to the Eagles. Our postgame show is sponsored by Factor, by the way. Get 50% off with the code NINERSCHAT50. We'll put that link for you down below in the comment section, as well as in the description of this video. This holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on jam-packed days. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service, can help you fuel up fast for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You're going to save time, you're going to eat well, and you're going to stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while tackling all of your holiday to-dos. I'm a great walking embodiment of that. On Saturday, surpassed 200 days on my running streak. On the 49ers report today, we did a five-hour stream, and then we went live on a different stream for our post-game show. I'm able to maintain this consistency, and this energy because I'm fueled up with Factor Meals. Skip the stress of meal prepping over the holidays like me with Factor. Choose from 35-plus weekly flavor-packed, fresh, never-frozen meals that support a healthy lifestyle and meet your meal preferences. All delivered straight to your door and ready to eat in just a couple of minutes. So it's 50% off factormeals.com slash Niners Chat limited time only hop on this deal right now the link is down below for your availability let's continue to talk about this football game i thought what changed the course of this game was the fact that the 49ers were able to overcome some early punches philadelphia marches right down the field on the first drive only got a field goal because the niners defense bent but it did not break second drive of the game Eagles offense moves right down the field, had to kick a field goal. Niners defense bent, but did not break. Up until that point, Philadelphia had dominated the football game. Brock Purdy had not completed a pass in this football game. But you're only down 6 nothing. So for this coaching staff with Kyle Shanahan, Steve Wilkes, Chris Kosarek, to make the necessary adjustments that they did, the Niners overcame some early jabs from Philadelphia. And then once they scored that touchdown to take that 7-6 to six lead, when the Niners play from ahead, they're so difficult to stop. So San Francisco getting those stops in the red zone was critical. And Brock Purdy, credit to him 
for making adjustments as well. There was nothing there on the first two drives. And then what changed is when the Niners got on the board with an 11-play, 85-yard drive to take the lead. Purdy had one incompletion on that drive. He finished the day 19-27, 314 yards, four touchdowns, no picks. Christian McCaffrey, I thought, looked to be and proved to be the difference maker that he's always been. 17 carries, 93 yards, and a touchdown. He just kept chipping away and chipping away. And today was the Debo Samuel game. This is why you signed Debo Samuel to the contract extension that you paid him prior to the 2022 season. Anytime that Debo Samuel gets his hands on the pill, he's a threat to take it to the crib. And Debo Samuel really helped blow the doors off of this football game with the touchdowns that he was able to score. The first one over the middle, Nicholas Morrow of Philadelphia can't make the tackle. Debo Samuel shakes it off like it's nothing. Like it's just a sheet that you throw on yourselves and he just throws it to the side. And he takes it to the crib with the acceleration and the explosiveness and the ability to make guys miss in the open field. And then once this game was pretty much decided, Debo Samuel had another touchdown, which, like the first one, was around that 50-yard mark. Four catches for 116 yards and two touchdowns that long of 48 on that aforementioned touchdown. He could flip the field. I love how Kyle Shanahan used him as a kick returner in this game. Use your weapons and act as though you need that victory. And San Francisco, they did that. And they made the substitutions, the adjustments, and they acted desperate. They acted as though they needed this victory, and they got it. And I thought that Debo was terrific. This Eagles team came in as one of the best tackling teams in the NFL. Today, they were awful. And this Niners team came in as the number one yards after the catch per completion team in the NFL. They won that matchup. Early in this game, in this first half, because George Kittle really didn't do anything in that second half, George Kittle, a couple of really, really big third down conversions, critical conversions in this football game. He served as that security blanket, that go-to option for quarterback Brock Purdy. And I thought that Kittle, with his ability to pick up yards after the catch, and I thought the Niners did a good job of kind of forcing the Eagles to cover downfield and then hitting them with some underneath routes to allow the San Francisco team to pick up yards after the catch. And George Kittle was a part of that. And Brandon Ayuk, five catches, 46 yards, and a touchdown. You know, Brandon Ayuk continues to be just a spectacular player on this Niners team. He's their number one wide receiver. And even though Debo went off today, you saw why it's important to have both. This is why you pay and keep Brandon Ayuk. You don't let special walk out of the door. But when you combine him, with Debo Samuel. These are game-changing weapons that help you surround your young quarterback and Brock Purdy with the necessary playmakers to be able to make massive plays throughout the juncture of a football game that could change the football game. And then San Francisco's defense. Holding the Philadelphia Eagles to 19 overall points is a win. The Niners went 8 of 11 on third downs. Philadelphia, 8 of 15. Total plays. Philadelphia ran 69 plays to the Niners, 57. Yet San Francisco outgained them 456 to 333. Both of these teams had equal drives, both with nine yards per play. We talked about that earlier. San Francisco, eight yards per play. Philadelphia, 4.8. And then you look at the pass rushing numbers for this Niners team, Jalen Hurts was under duress throughout the entire game. I thought the Hurts played well, but this Niners team did a very good job with their defensive line of kind of dominating an Eagles offensive line that is probably, arguably, the best in football. San Francisco only with three team sacks, but they had nine quarterback hits. The defensive backs for San Francisco were outrageously good. 11 pass breakups against Philadelphia. 
Charvarius Ward once again. Lockdown defender on either Devontae Smith or A.J. Brown. His ability to turn around and address the football. Clutch. Big time stuff. That's what quarterbacks need to do in this league. Ambry Thomas. Fourth consecutive game. He played great football as well. The adjustment that Kyle Shanahan and Steve Wilkes made in that secondary. Benching Isaiah Oliver. Diamador Lenore from outside of the slot. And putting Ambry Thomas on the outside has helped change this Niners defense. And now San Francisco, over their last four games, they have accumulated 18 sacks. Pretty damn good. They turned it around. Steve Wilkes deserves credit for that as well. Let's get to your super chats here. Kalen Adaki, one of our Goldmine Hall of Fame members. Anybody who sends in $100 or more with a single solo super chat, you're a Goldmine Hall of Fame member. Kalen all the if, ands, and buts, it's been answered. Bang, bang, Niner gang. I agree. You know, for San Francisco to go on the road, to win this game the way that they did, now, you know, you may have an indication of what the NFC Championship game may have looked like if Brock Purdy stayed healthy. Now, Philadelphia still dominated that football game, so maybe the Niners lose in a close one, but this right here, this right here is a statement. Kelly, $5. That was hands down one of the best football games I've ever seen. 49ers haters got a lot of retracting to do. I don't understand how anybody hates on this Niners team. Like when you think about the future Hall of Famers, the All Pros, the Pro Bowlers that are on this team, from Trent Williams to Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, Fred Warner, Nick Bosa, and then you add in good coaching, like we saw today from San Francisco, and the other quality players, like a Charvarius Ward, Ambry Thomas stepping up, Dre Greenlaw, I know he got ejected, weird scenario right there, you can't contact an Eagles staff member in the face on the sideline, that's what the officials saw, that's why they threw him out, but when you have dogs like that, this is a stacked roster, and the Philadelphia Eagles and the San Francisco 49ers, when I watch this game today, they are the two top teams in the National Football League because I don't think a team in the AFC matches up. You can make the argument that the Baltimore Ravens do. We'll see Ravens and Niners in a couple of weeks. Night Shift Garage, $20. Thanks for the play-by-play -play and informative updates during the watch party. It was just a different game when we played with the quarterback. We made outstanding halftime adjustments. I totally agree. Rick Nyers with the 20. I'm not saying that would have been the result in the NFC Championship game, but Brock showed everyone what he's made of and what the Niners are capable of. You know, this, this quote from Bradley Roby in the lead-up to this game, he's the Eagle slot corner, been in the league for a long time, really stood out to me. He said that Brock Purdy does such a great job of throwing receivers open. And he said that's kind of a lost art in the NFL. A lot of quarterbacks don't do that these days. He said, I played with Peyton Manning. He did that. He said that Brock Purdy does that as well. And what that means is, if something's not there, you can still throw the football there to lead one of your targets to lead to a big play. And that's what, you know, Brock Purdy does so well. That's what he did in this game. On some of those third, four, uh, third down conversions, like there wasn't necessarily a play there or a guy wide open. But with the anticipation and anticip anticipatory throws, anticipation is so underrated for a quarterback. Like, that's what he has. And that's why I've continued to say this dude's special. J Code Travels, $5 super chat. Uh, Grant Cohn said Kyle Shanahan adjusted by staying away from the slow developing plays that he likes to do. And Kyle Shanahan adjusted. Brock Purdy, the shotgun to get the ball out out of his hand quickly. Yeah, I said that during the watch party. I said this during this pregame show. First two drives, Niners go three and out. Eagles fans are making noise. Eagles feel the momentum of the game. And then after that, on that third drive, 11 play, 85 yards, one incompletion for Purdy. And it was because he was pressured. He kind of had to dirt that ball to, I believe, George Kittle in the flat. But making those adjustments to make his life easier, to get the ball out of his hands, to neutralize what is a very good Eagles pass rush, good adjustments right there. Allie Smith, $10. I've been saying the last two weeks we could win this game, 
So glad we got the dub. Shout out to the Canadian fans. I love the Niners. I love Canada. Shout out to you, Allie Smith. And look, you know, I took the Niners to win the NFC Championship game last year. I took the Eagles to win this game slightly. I'm wrong. I'll eat the crow. I mean, I took the Niners last year in the NFC title bout, but I didn't doubt San Francisco. I said on this show they can win this game. I said on Larry Kruger's show they can win this game. And they dominated to a very impressive degree. Allie Smith, thank you for that. Jeremy Roberson, $20 Super Chat. I was a bit concerned after the first quarter. They didn't pick up a first down in the first quarter, ladies and gentlemen, by the way. But after, uh, what is it, falling into a groove and realizing that we are quickly wearing down their defensive line, I knew that we had it. I think on equal rest, that could have been a different game. San Francisco getting a week and a half of rest helped them in this game. There is just no doubt about it, but you can't allow that to take credit away from what they were able to do. Big Hurt, $2. Hey, Chase, I told you we would spank the Sheagles. Shout out to you. Shout outs to Words of Wisdom. I did not envision a 42-19 game, and I still don't think that both of these teams have been able to play at full strength in their two matchups the last two years. But in the last three years, San Francisco now owns this matchup 2-1. to one. Tony Mesa, $5. I'm a Ducks fan, so it was nice to see Marcus Mariota play today. Unfortunate for Oregon to lose that Pac-12 championship game to Washington on Friday. I actually thought Mariota played somewhat solid in the short relief of Jalen Hurts. Tom Daly, $5 right here. Great job, Chase and Chip. Kind of weird, but it worked. I enjoy you on the Krug Show. Niners offensive line did better than I thought it would. Shout out to Chip. Type Chip in the chat. He crushed it. And yes, it is a little bit unique. And I understand why people are like, how do you cover the Niners as well as the Eagles? Look, I was hired in 2021 at Chat Sports, a job that has changed my life forever to specifically cover the Niners, the entire NFL, and the NBA here at Chat Sports. Then we had a person who left the company who was covering the Eagles leave to do his own thing, Thomas Mott. So I'm from Philadelphia. They asked me to cover Eagles. These are two teams that had no previous history as rivals or any previous history in general. I grew up in Philly. You think I'm going to turn down an opportunity to talk about a team that I know very well that is able to give me quality of life to make more money in sports broadcasting? Those of you who listen to podcasts about your favorite team, those of you who watch the local news, you watch regional sports networks, whatever, not everybody is from San Francisco or the Bay Area or grew up as Niner fans. But this is what I can tell you. In a game like this today, when I have watched every snap from the Niners and Eagles, nobody better qualified to talk about this game than myself. And producer Chip, he's pretty much Watch every single snap from these two teams as well. And I think that an unbiased approach to Niners coverage is sometimes good because you don't get some of these homers out there, which is sometimes leading to the coverage just not being truthful. I'm real. I'm truthful. I keep it 100. So thank you, Tom Daly. 42-19 San Francisco 49ers win on the road against the Philadelphia Eagles. And... Can we take a look at the playoff picture before we hop on out of here? Because San Francisco is still not the number one seed in the NFC. They need the Eagles to lose one more game the rest of the way. And then the Niners need to obviously continue their tear here. But I think that we are going to see this game again at the end of January in the NFC Championship game. The Philadelphia Eagles... 10-2, still the number one seed in the NFC through 13 games, or 12 games in 13 weeks, excuse me. Sorry about that. And the 49ers in a very good spot at 9-3. Detroit Lions, 9-3. There is so much of a gap between the Eagles and Niners and the other teams in this conference. You could throw in the Dallas Cowboys, but until they do something meaningful in a meaningful spot, I just don't have confidence in Dallas in being able to beat this Niners team who put up 41 points on the board, and we'll see what happens with Eagles-Cowboys next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We appreciate you for watching. 
This is a blessing to be able to host this show and to be able to have this platform. I do not take it for granted, and I love the faithful. Thank you.